In this video, I'm going to share with you one of the most important concepts I've learned over my years as a stock and option trader that will absolutely increase your profit while decreasing your risk. This concept applies to all different trading strategies and all different trading styles, whether you're a day trader or a long-term trader, whether you're a stock trader or an option trader. To help you understand this concept, let me first demonstrate it by using something that we're probably all familiar with, and that's a crosswalk, as you see here. Now, most of us know what a crosswalk is designed to do. It's designed to get us from one side of the street safely to the other side of the street. And the concept I'm going to share with you in this video is similar. You see, it's designed to help you enter trades at the safest possible spot that will also enable you to exit that trade safely and for a win a very high percentage of the time. For example, looking at this example of the crosswalk, this man is using this crosswalk properly. That'd be the equivalent of using the concept I'm going to share with you in this video to help you make less stressful, less risky trades that will also help you to win more. On the other hand, if this man decided to cross the street, say right up in here, then notice that with this car coming, that puts him in a more risky position. Now he could also choose to cross this street after the crosswalk. But again, the most optimal spot would be to use the crosswalk. By using this crosswalk, he's crossing the street in a safer and at the optimal position on this street. The goal of the concept I'm about to share with you is to do five things for you. It's first to create a low stress type of trade you can enter. The second is to give you a technique that you can use over and over and over again, no matter what type of trading you do. The third goal is to give you a trading strategy you can use that has a very high winning percentage. The fourth goal of this trading concept is to increase the odds of you getting in and out of a trade as fast as possible with as little risk as possible. And finally, the fifth goal is to give you a really easy trade you can do over and over again. If you're using a basketball analogy, you might compare this concept to a layup. I'm going to talk this concept with you by sharing a real life trade that we are in that we use this exact strategy on. Here you see a trade we did in PayPal. We sold to open the PayPal July 21st, $65 cash care put options. This is going back to June 21st. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to enter my position slowly. So you see that although we started this position on the 21st, on the 22nd, we added another July $65 cash secure put option. The next day on the 23rd, you see we added an additional $62.5 cash secure put option for 91 cents per share. A few days later on the 27th, you see we sold an additional $62.5 July cash secure put option. Then finally on July 3rd, we sold one more PayPal July 21st $65 cash secure put option for 73 cents per share. At this point, we had a full position size on in PayPal. So we were done adding to it. Now I'm going to fast forward in time to today. And here you see it today, which is July 11th, we bought to close the PayPal July 21st, 62 and a half dollar put options for seven cents per share. So we were able to get in and out of this trade in right about two weeks for almost full profit. Now why were we able to do that? It's because I used the concepts I'm going to share with you right now. Here you see the daily chart of PayPal. Each one of these yellow arrows is a day that we sold a cash secured put option in PayPal. Now going back to our crosswalk illustration, how can we make sure that we're entering a position in PayPal at the safest and most opportune time that will give us the least risk and enable us to maximize our return? Let's talk through this daily chart of PayPal. Notice that going back to the end of May, beginning of June, that PayPal had recently made a new lower low. However, at that point, although we didn't know it, PayPal had reversed course. Over the next several weeks, PayPal made a new higher low. Then several days later, it made a higher high. Now that's a concept I share with my patrons in almost every single trade that we make. But that's not the concept I want to share with you in this video. Notice what happened after PayPal made that new higher low and higher high. Now it's important for you to understand a simple concept when it comes to technical analysis. Once an area that served as resistance for a stock has been broken through, like it did here on June 15th, that area then typically turns into support. Notice this area had served as resistance for PayPal back around June 6th and 7th. That coincided with a $65 area. Once it broke through that area on the 15th, we then expected that area to turn into support for PayPal next time it came down. Well, PayPal had a nice advance. It went up another 6.5% before topping out. But notice that it also had broke through this green 50 moving average on this daily chart. Remember that moving averages, they typically serve as support and resistance for stocks. That's exactly what we see PayPal did for a few days here. However, that wasn't the real support we're looking at. The real support we're looking at was this previous wave's high that had been resistance for PayPal. So what will be the safest spot for us to place our cash or put option strike prices that would cause us the least level of worry or the least risk and that would give us the highest percentage opportunity to win on this trade? Well, I knew it was gonna be right around this $65 area. And if we wanted to go safer, then we could 
sell the $62.5 strike price, which was the area that sort of support for it in the middle of June. So you see the five yellow arrows and each one of these are days that enter a new cash kaput option. Sometimes they're at the $65 strike price, and sometimes they were at the $62.5 strike price. I felt comfortable entering this first cash care put option PayPal because it had broken out above this green 50 moving average. I decided the safest spot to cross this street, going back to our crosswalk example, or the safest spot to sell this cash care put option was right here at this previous wave's high or right around 65. That $65 level is where we sold our first two cash care put options on June 21st and June 22nd. But then on June 23rd, PayPal began to come down in price. And because of that, I wanted to increase the safety of this trade. So instead of selling the $65 strike price, which would put it right about here, I decided to come down to a previous level of support and sell it at the $62.5 price point. Notice that's exactly what we did for 91 cents per share. And then also again on June 27th, for 64 cents per share. Now we still had a little more room to add to this position, but I wanted to make sure that PayPal was going to indeed find support at that level we thought it would, that $65 level. Indeed, we see fast forwarding to June 30th, PayPal then began to take off and over the next three days. It proved that it had indeed found support at that $65 level that we had anticipated. So we sold one more $65 cash secure put option that expired on the third Friday of July. Now I know that was a lot to throw at you, so I wanna make sure that we keep this simple. Trading should be simple. So let's simplify what I just shared with you. The safest time to enter a bullish position is when a stock has proven that it is in a bullish trend. We see PayPal had done that. It made a higher low and it also made a higher high. We then wait for it to come down and retest previous support, which we see it did right in here. It tests this level of resistance around $65 from back in early June. Now the question for you is, which one of these five arrows was the safest spot to enter this trade? Now you could say, Randy, they were all equal, but in actuality, they weren't. Let me tell you why. The most risky was this first position here, this first arrow. And the reason is that PayPal had not come down to retest the $65 area. We were just anticipating that it would successfully find support around $65 per share. Over the next two days, we entered two more trades, which again, those were not the least risky trades that we entered. Then on June 27th, we entered another trade, which was not as risky as the first two because we see that PayPal had kind of been finding support around this $65 to $66 area. But the least risky trade out of all the ones he did was the last one. And the reason for that is that PayPal had come down and tested support and proven that that support was going to hold because of this nice green volume bar followed by the next day we entered our last trade when it broke back through that green 50 moving average on a nice green bullish candle. So out of these five, the least risky time to enter this trade was right here PayPal had made a new higher low, it had made a new higher high, it had come down and successfully retested this area that should have served as support for it, and that support held. It then began to take off again, and because of that, this final trade we did on July 3rd was the crosswalk. That was the most optimal day to enter this cash secure put option trade, or if you had bought the stock, to buy the stock. Now, all these days ends up being successful trades. However, if you're looking for the least risky entry point, well, that would have been right here on July 3rd. Selling puts or buying stock at entry points like what we did here on July 3rd is kind of like crossing the street at the crosswalk. If you're trying to make the safest trade possible with the highest percent opportunity to win, you prefer not to sell it before the crosswalk. You prefer to sell it right as the stock has entered the crosswalk or at the safest spot, which was once it had found support and was taking off again in this bullish trend. Before I end this video, I wanna share with you three more tips that I think will be invaluable for you, especially if you ever find yourself in a trading slump. Using the information I gave in this video of what is the best time to enter a trade for maximum profit while decreasing your risk is vital. But even in spite of that, sometimes you find yourself in a trading slump. It's like every trade you do goes against you. Use the information I just shared with you along with these next three tips. The first tip is to use the concept I shared in this video where if you're trading cash secure put options, instead of selling your options at the money like we do with the $65 strike price, sell them out of the money like we do with the $62.5 cash secure put options. That gives you room to be wrong and still win on the trade. With this scenario, by selling the $62.5 cash secure put options as compared to the $65 cash secure put options, we had 3.8% more room for PayPal to come down before our put option will be challenged. That greatly increased the odds of us winning on the $62.5 cash secure put options. The second tip is to don't always go for home runs. Babe Ruth was well known for his home runs, and that's all great. But in making a living and trading, sometimes the best thing you can do is to pick safe trades that consistently put money into your pocket. What I just share with you is one that puts $1,000 in my pocket 
every single month and has for many, many years. Now, I'm not telling you to never go for home runs. For example, using this same stock, PayPal, here you see a trade we're in right now that we entered back on June 2nd where we're absolutely swinging for a home run. And I'll show you the potential profit in this trade in a second. I won't go into the details about this trade, but this is one that we're swinging for a home run. But in spite of that, we have very little at risk compared to how much we can make. Now this is the type of ratio spread that we're in right now on PayPal. And just to keep it really simple for you, this home run that we're swinging for has a max potential loss of right about $3,000. But we have a long time to be in this trade. And notice that the potential profit on this position is estimated to be at around $58,000. Now will we make that? Well, most likely no. The odds of hitting it with that maximum profit are very low. But the max we can lose is $3,000 with a huge potential profit margin. And while we're waiting on this trade, there's a lot of things that we can do with this trade to adjust it to avoid that $3,000 loss if it appears that's what's going to happen in the coming year and a half. You see, we enter this trade using options that have a January of 2025 position. And we set this trade up to minimize risk. In fact, as you saw, we capped our risk at just under $3,000, but we have a huge potential win if PayPal does what it looks like it might potentially do. So that second tip was don't make all your trades home runs. Make most of your trades the safe trades like what I shared with you at the beginning of this video and then sprinkle in a few home runs, but just make sure you understand what you have at risk and make sure that the reward you could potentially get for that risk is worth it. The next tip I want to share with you is to review your trades and ask yourself, what is the one or two trades that you get right pretty much almost 100% of the time? For me, it's doing similar to what I share with you. It's also using channels and moving averages on multiple time frames to make sure I'm entering positions at the most optimal times. Now, very seldom do you get the perfect setup. Oftentimes, if you had a checklist of 10 things, then you'll have five, six, seven, or eight. But look through your trades and find the ones that end up being winners for you pretty much 100% of the time and make that the staple of your trading strategy. Those are the types of trades that you can make a living on and if you're in a slump, those are the trades you want to focus on. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades, like the ones I shared in PayPal in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see the simple indicator I use that tells me exactly when to buy and sell a stock or an option, check out the video at the link below entitled, The Simple Indicator That Shows Exactly When to Buy and Sell. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.